On the line with us, our old friend Eamon Fingleton, the economics writer, author of numerous books, most recently, and I think it's brilliant, uh, In the Jaws of the Dragon, Fingleton.net, his website, Eamon, and uh, an Irish writer and, and uh, on economic issues who is living has lived in, in Japan for 25 years. You, you write, Eamon, about how your first earthquake 25 years ago uh, shocked you and didn't shock the Japanese around you, but uh, this one was a little different. Welcome back to the program. Uh, thank you, Tom. Delighted to be with you. Uh, yes, it was a hell of a shock for all of us. Uh, I, I don't know anybody in Tokyo who's been through a worse one, but it was actually uh, uh, pretty uh, um, okay for us compared to those uh, 200 miles to the north who, of course, were wiped out. Yeah. Uh, you, you say you were on the 11th floor of a building in downtown Tokyo in your office there, and, and, it, and it began to sway. And I, I, I think we've all seen the, the, the footage now of that. Um, I'm curious your take on the radiation situation. Apparently the levels are up in Tokyo. There is a story on, let me just get to the, head, the top of this thing here, on um, CNBC about how private bankers in Tokyo have bought up all the private jets, 160000 bucks for 14 people to rent a private jet, to the point that there are no private jets left because the, the bankers got there first, and they're fleeing the city. What are, the, what are you and other citizens of Tokyo thinking right now about the radiation? Well, it's pretty scary, I must say. Um, the um, earthquake itself cost seven lives in Tokyo, but uh, now this, this one... Um, I, I was at a press conference today where we had um, uh, um, some uh, citizens, American, Japanese citizens, uh, who were interested in the nu- nuclear uh, power issue, and uh, they, they were telling us how bad things were. And uh, I asked a question uh, directly. Uh, 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 I asked this woman who was an expert in the field uh, what, what she would do if she were a foreigner and had a family here and uh, could easily get out of the country. And she said, Get out of the country. Wow. 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 Out of the country, not just, you know, go to go to some city that's two or three hundred miles away from the from these reactors rather than <laughs> she said it like that. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Of course, like, uh, I think that we could go to the West or something. Uh, yeah. like, Japan's but, a big place. But you know? apparently that's that's what a lot of Japanese are doing. Um, you, you've lived there 25 years. Your wife is Japanese. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you're you're going to stick around. Uh, for now, we're, we're sticking around. Yeah, I, I, um, I've been slightly consoled by the fact that foreign experts who seem to know what they're saying tend to be uh, rather calm about the situation. When I say foreign experts, I mean people in London or New York or uh, somewhere else, Vienna, uh, who, who seem to understand the technicalities. Uh, they say it's not that bad. Uh, that's not what I'm hearing. <laughs> I gotta tell you, some of the foreign experts here in the U.S. are freaked out because they these these idiots who designed this nuclear power plant uh, for General Electric, three engineers by the way resigned because they said it was so dangerous. You know, gave up their careers 25 years ago um, to design these Mark One reactors. Uh, they put the nuclear waste on the ceiling on the roof of the reactor building. And it is that nuclear waste, in, in some cases as much as eight loads worth of nuclear fuel that has now become nuclear waste. So instead of mostly uranium, it's like cesium and iodine and, 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 and thorium and all these other things. It's, it's, it's like a giant dirty bomb, and, and it's boiling away the cooling water. And this is the concern about four, five, and six, and it'll become the, the world's worst dirty bomb. God Almighty! Um, this is news to me. Um, I, I, I um, when, when did this come out? Um, two, day before yesterday, and we've been talking about it for two days here. Uh, it, it, you may, if you go to um, to our website, TomHartman dot com, or to uh, actually Democratic Underground dot com, has right now a bunch of my videos up, and you can see my interview yesterday. Uh, with uh, you know a nuclear expert here in the United States who who just laid it out you know they they they've got all this nuclear waste on the roofs of these buildings and the only thing separating the nuclear waste from the environment is basically corrugated metal uh, you know it's it's like you know Quonset hut metal 
And the explosions, the hydrogen explosions, have been taking place in the nuclear waste, not in the nuclear reactors down below. And, in, and they've blown the tops off. And once that water boils off, it's going to be a real, real mess. And so, I, I knew there was an issue with the nuclear waste, but the, the, this is... Uh uh, this is sensational. This say, is the thing know. nobody wants to talk about, Eamon, because the the uh, nuclear waste is the Achilles heel of the entire nuclear industry. And so, you know, they, they use uh, f- phrases like spent fuel, you know, so you, people don't know what you're talking about. It's nuclear waste. Anyhow, how is how is this? We want to talk, you know, you write about economics. I understand that because so many of these nuclear reactors have been shut down, that there's a shortage of electricity in Japan. A lot of the factories were actually damaged in this quake. Japan supplies many of the precision parts that end up going to China or Hong Kong and being assembled into things like our computers and our phones and whatnot. And uh, there is this international supply chain now that has been created as a result of, of 30 years of globalism. How is this going to affect the, not so much the stock market world economy, but the, the actual production of goods and moving of things around the world world economy? Um, it's going to be very big. I, I've been uh, having a uh, close look at this, and I am indeed uh, uh, something of an expert on, uh, on this supply chain. I've um, investigated it um, years ago um, and mapped many of Japan's uh, effective monopolies in very rarefied materials, uh, very, very high-tech, uh, but rather obscure components, uh, special machines that are uh, very important in various industries, but nobody knows about at the consumer level. Um, Japan has an awful lot of these, hundreds of them, and um, m- many of them um, probably are located in uh, this area that has been devastated. Well, we don't know yet because um, corporate Japan tends to be rather vague about um, uh, its operations. It tends not to disclose where exactly it does particular things. So uh, we have to just wait and see um, where where the um, shortages arise. Right. So uh, are there any indications, any early indications that the uh, global economy in, or the global business of high-tech electronics in particular uh, is already being affected? I mean, are we going to start seeing shortages of laptops or chips or computers or things like that? Um, one thing that um, uh, we're worried about uh, the, is uh, special uh, NAND uh, chips, N-A-N-D chips, uh, mm. which are so-called flash memories, which are used in uh, iPods, iPads, things like that. Um, Japan accounts for 40% of the world's supply, and some of the factories are in the affected area. Wow. Um, but but there, there are many other things. I know that uh, Nissan Motor has its uh, main engine factory for its larger cars in the affected area. So the Infinity, things like that. Uh, the engines for uh, those cars worldwide, maybe uh, the supply there may be g- g- crucially affected. Uh, uh, other car companies have uh, big operations in the area. Um, there are various other um, uh, electronic companies that uh, are in the area. Uh, um, so-called microcontrollers are made in a couple of factories in the area. Microcontrollers are things that you, you might have in a, a hot pacemaker. Uh, Right. Uh, various applications, engines of cars, also have microcontrollers. So there's all sorts of things. Yeah. So so this this is going to have consequences beyond just the nuclear consequences. Eamon Fingleton, Fingleton.net is the website for Eamon's works. Uh, I strongly recommend his most recent book, In the Jaws of the Dragon. Eamon, thanks for so much for being with us from Tokyo today. Okay. Thanks. 